timing belt change on an 04 WRX. Um, it's a real rally car. My friend Brian's supplied this to us. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you can change your spark plugs, you can probably do your timing belt. Don't quote me. I don't know everybody, so see how it works out. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at the tools you're going to need. I recommend getting everything I have. Um, you can substitute. However, use good discretion. Okay, to do this job, you're going to need a few tools. Start out, we have the blue thread locker. This will ensure you're not going to get it way too tight and not be able to break it loose. So, some of that. A 3 8 inch drive ratchet. I have a couple there. 3 8 inch drive extensions. A couple different sizes there. A feeler gauge. This is going to judge our distance between the timing belt guides. A half inch drive 22 millimeter socket. A 3 8 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and 14 millimeter socket. Metric Allen keys. I'm not sure exactly which size we need yet, but just have a, plenty of them on hand. Half inch to 3 8 inch adapter. 10 millimeter, 3 8 inch drive hex keys. We'll need two of those. Half inch drive breaker bar. It's ratcheting and locks in place. We've got another one here. This one's 3 8 inch drive. Same thing. A 3 8 inch drive torque wrench. This one goes between 0 to 50 pounds, which is perfectly fine for what we need. Next we have an 8 millimeter wrench, a 10 millimeter wrench, and a 12 millimeter wrench. This here is our big uh, breaker bar extension. It's just a piece of black pipe, but it will do the trick to break loose that crank pulley, which is nice and tight. Telescoping mechanics mirror. Very handy to find your belt marks where you can't stick your big head. Flathead screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver. We recommend Subaru coolant conditioner when you refill your coolant. And there is the two gallons of concentrated 100% coolant. And here finally if you're going to be reusing your tensioner, if you're just taking this all off to change your oil pump or water pump or just do some adjustments, you're going to probably use, reuse your tensioner at that point and you'll need a C-clamp to reset the piston on it. That concludes everything you need to do this. We'll move on to the timing belt kit. Alright, this is our timing belt kit that we ordered. Um, we have OEM replacement parts except for the belt, which is a Conta Tech by Continental. Um, it's a belt I've been using for a while now and have had no issues with. Pretty happy with it. Um, when choosing a belt, try not to go with a generic name that no one's ever heard of. You want to put the trust of your engine into something, um, maybe with a better brand name. Um, also, I, I'm not going to completely dog gates on this, but this is a gates timing belt. Um, job here. It was on for 3,000 miles and there's a huge caking of blue gunk. I don't know what it is or why it came off on all the pulleys, but uh, not sure if maybe that's something that's intentional or not, but I wasn't real happy with that. So uh, I choose not to do the high performance belts myself. Um, here we have a brand new tensioner. Um, has the pull pin in it. Uh, this is the splined gear, idler gear the upper coil, the lower NSK. Now with the small idler that we have, um, the updated idler, it's the exact same part number as the old one, however with the old one you're going to need a shorter bolt. If you can see the depth difference inside, you're going to have about 10 millimeter difference on the bolt. So you'll need to find a slightly shorter bolt by about 10 millimeters or maybe you can hacksaw your old one shorter um, well that's what I recommend for it to fit right. Okay, to start with, we're going to remove the negative terminal on the battery. It's going to prevent any unwanted sparks flying. Pull that off and tuck it out of the way so it can't touch. 
Next, if you have a Snorkus, remove that to 10 millimeter. Take the two bolts out here, and it should pull right out. Okay, next, we're going to take the cap off of the turbo coolant tank. It's going to relieve any kind of pressure. Make sure your car is cooled off before you do this. Next, if your car has a skid plate or a splash guard underneath, we need to remove that. Usually it's 12 millimeter bolts and a couple of clips. Um, this car is used off-road, so it has a custom setup. We'll pull that off and we'll move to the next step. Okay, next we're going to drain the radiator. There's a drain valve at the bottom here. Got a little butterfly knob on it we need to turn. Um, it's a little hard to get to, especially with a big arm like I have. So we're going to re remove or at least unclip the power steering reservoir. There's a black metal clip you need to pull backwards on and pull up and it'll kind of move out of the way and give you a little more room. Okay, the coolant is about halfway drained. It's below this top level of the upper radiator hose. What we're going to do is remove that. Um, we've got this set up with just flathead clamps. So we'll loosen those and just remove the upper radiator hose. Can we remove it completely? There's another one on the other side next to the power steering pump. Do the same thing there. And take the hose out. Next, we have the two coolant reservoir lines that go to the radiator. We're going to remove those. They have small clamps on them. You can just squeeze by, by hand. If they're too tight, you could use some pliers. They usually come right off, though, without too much of a problem. And swing the lines out of the way. Okay, next, we're going to do the coolant expansion tank. Um, now, on the bug eyes, or the 02, 03s, these usually have like a 10 millimeter bolt on them. Uh, maybe some of the STIs have them too. You can undo the 10 millimeter bolt and then unclip it. This model just has the clip only. So you push the black clip in and pull the tank up and out. There's also a hose in it that can come out and uh, you can just pull that out and the whole thing comes out. Okay, next we're going to remove the lower radiator hose. Uh, there's a clamp on there. Undo that clamp. The OEM clamps are a Phillips screwdriver we replace them with flathead worm clamps and twist and remove that hose. Sometimes it gets stuck on there pretty good with gunked up coolant. And you're also going to get some coolant out of that. So I have a bowl ready for it to spill out into. Okay, next we're going to undo the passenger side radiator harness. Now this is an 04 model. The 04, 05, maybe up, has the real pain in the butt connectors. I always like to use a small screw. Um, pinch it with the thumb and the index finger and push down on the small clip on the top and pull with my middle finger in order to pull the harness out. And we're going to do the same thing on the driver side. It's under a black piece of plastic and uh, it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt but it can be done. Okay, now we're going to do the driver side. It's under that black piece of plastic I mentioned. Pain to get to but uh, if you have an O2 or maybe an 03 WRX, you might not be faced with this problem because they have the clips that you need to pull up on. They're a lot easier to pull apart. So once you get this one out, um, come over here and unclip the power steering line from the radiator if it's still clipped in place. And we'll unbolt the radiator and get it ready to be pulled out. Next we're going to remove the radiator. We have two 12 millimeter bolts we're going to take out and these will remove the radiator brackets. Once you get those removed, place them out of the way. Or you're not going to lose them. Now the radiator is just about ready to come out. You need to watch for the power steering side. You have a small metal hose that will interfere with the power steering line. Once you've freed that up, tilt the radiator to the driver side and you'll have coolant come out of the lower hose into the bowl below. Remove the radiator and set it in a spot where it won't get damaged. Okay, Next we're going to remove the accessory belt cover. Um, this model has the throttle cables so we need to pull those clips out. You need to squeeze underneath and pop the clip up. Now, if you can't get these with your fingers or too tight, grab some needle nose pliers or pliers to help you. Once you unclip those, 
take a 10 millimeter socket wrench, undo the bolt at the top, and the one on the side. This one is a nut, take the nut all the way off, the cover should loosen. However, there's still a rivet in there that needs to be popped out, so don't break the cover. Lightly pop it up, and then slide it off the bolt and remove the cover. Okay, next we're going to remove the crank pulley bolt. Well, not necessarily remove it, but we're going to loosen it. Um, you'll need a friend for this one to jump in the driver's side and put the car in third gear and hold the brake. Once they're in there holding the brake down, clutch is out. I'm going to take a 22 millimeter breaker bar on the half inch drive breaker bar and my cheater pipe. The uh, pipe will just give you extra leverage. It's going to be tight. Put it on the crank. Holding the brake. Yep. And it should break loose. next step is for if you're equipped with an automatic transmission. I only hope if you have an automatic you at least have this type of pulley on your car. It's the easiest to work with on those. You have the four holes. Uh, there are some Subarus that do not have these four hole pulleys and that probably makes it a little more challenging to break loose if it's not a manual. Um, I've read a procedure where you can use your breaker bar and you'd be able to put it on the bolt and lean it against the alternator pulley and flick the starter However, that sounds a little dangerous to me. I've never used that procedure, but didn't want to leave it out in case it's the only thing that works for somebody. Um, but for this procedure, what I use on an automatic is two 3 8 inch drive socket extensions. And this is a, a tire bead breaker bar. Um, you would put those in there like that and brace with the bar. This will prevent it from moving on you. Have somebody hold that if you can. And then you would put your 22 mil socket, the breaker bar on there, and break it loose. Okay, next we're going to remove the accessory belts. We'll start with the alternator and power steering belt. Uh, use a 3 8 inch ratchet with an extension and a 12 millimeter socket. I'm going to start by loosening the bolts on either side of the alternator. Two or three turns is fine. Once you've loosened those, the top adjuster bolt needs to be loosened to where you have enough slack on the belt that it comes off the pulleys. The alternator doesn't sink on its own. You might want to loosen it and then push down on the alternator to give it that slack. and remove the belt. Okay, next we're going to remove the belt for the AC compressor. This has a tensioner on it. Instead of messing with the adjuster bolt, we're going to leave the adjuster bolt where it is so that way it's set up when we put it right back on. We don't have to mess with it. Uh, there's two 12 millimeter bolts on it. Start by cracking them loose and work them out kind of evenly at first. And then remove one completely and that will loosen the tension on the belt all the way 